Hi, this is Dr. Doresti with the Cranial Release Technique, back with another video, back with our friend John D'Ambrosio from Woodstock, Georgia. John, good morning. Good to see you again. Good morning. Great to be here. <laughs> uh, last time we, we visited you, you were kind enough to bring us into your practice, show us your, your initial test that you do. You showed us the HRV machine, which was fascinating. So now they come to you, you, you apply your cranial release, you apply your chiropractic adjustment if you feel that's necessary. And tell us what do you do when you're done with that adjusting? When, when hands come off, you're done. What's next in your office? Uh, and that's really key to our office. It's something that I'm not familiar with any other office doing. Is we have people come in and they come on to what we call our transformation stations. Now, science has shown that for the 20 minutes after a chiropractic adjustment, the brain is most plastic, so it's most open to changes. So the old time chiropractors used to have what they call resting rooms. So you get adjusted and you would lie down for a certain period of time. You know, it could be 10 minutes, it could have been two hours, and you're just lying there. And they, their theory was it let the adjustment set. And there, there's some scientific uh, credence behind that. So that 20 minutes after the adjustment, when the brain is most plastic and open to change, my thoughts are, why would I take you brain open to changes and then send you right back out into the world that got you to that situation in the first place? So you cut, you're out, you're balanced, you're healing. You go out into traffic, someone cuts you off, you're back under stress again. It's just going to set you right back again. That's so <laughs> exactly. So what I have people do is they come in. So uh, the transformation station consists of three things, and all three are super important. Uh, again, this was proven 90% of the brain's energy is used to keep you upright in gravity, and that's why cranial release is so important. So what we do after the adjustment is we have them in these zero-gravity chairs. So they actually recline all the way back. I'm not going to do that now. I'll probably knock the camera over. But now you're taking the gravity off the, uh, the spine so the brain can now focus on healing. While you're doing that, you're lying on these mats. These are earthing or grounding mats. And again, tons of studies out there showing how they balance the electrons in your body, reduce inflammation, promote healing. So you're lying there now out of gravity on these mats. So super healing mode. And then we kick in with these uh, brain tap headsets. And these are fascinating. They have lights. You can probably see the lights there. There's also lights in the eyepiece. So it actually, you put this on, look like you're ready to uh, launch in a Star Wars movie. But, and then while you're reclined, this uh, brain tap is like a brain fitness. So the lights going into your ears and your eyes, along with the sounds are actually programming your brain to heal. And then you could go with specific uh, different programs within the set. So say you're, you're, you want to lose weight. Well, there's a whole weight loss a uh, bunch that, of uh, soundtracks you listen to. You don't want to hear anything. There's just music. You want to, um, you're anxious in front of people. There's things for anxiety. There's all sorts of programs. So that's just an added bonus to help you reach goals that are not really related to what we do, but they're personal goals that you have. So you're lying there for between uh, 12 and 20 minutes, totally relaxed. The room is dark. We have the lights on now for filming purposes. But the room is dark, there's just one light in the corner and you just sit down, if you're cold, we put a blanket on you and you just lie there. A lot of people just fall asleep. And then we re recommend, there's a um, the BrainTap app that people download this app. They get a free trial in our office for 14 days. And we recommend everybody does it two to three times a day while they're out of the office because we're only with you for a few minutes out of an entire week. So we want to make sure during the rest of that time, you're maximizing that time to be able to heal. So we recommend people use the brain tap in the morning. First thing they wake up before they get out of bed, sometime in the middle of the day, and again at night before they go to bed. And the results with this whole package, people just notice such profound changes that you wouldn't normally notice without adding this in. Wow. It sounds like a... <laughs> It sounds like a full VIP treatment that they're getting really when they're coming in between Absolutely. everything that you're doing. And I was not aware of what you're doing after the adjustment and after the CRT. So that's that sounds great. I, as you know, moved to Florida and uh, 
although there are a lot of chiropractors in Florida, you know, you find the one that resonates with you. And I found a, a gentleman that's a drop older than me and you, and he graduated from life and he's not a mile from where I live. And we were talking and uh, he ended up living in Virginia for a little while and went to what we'll call an old time chiropractor. And he would adjust you and make you rest for 30 minutes, regardless of what your excuse was. You had to if you wanted to stay and be his patient. Right. And that was the old style. And it's so interesting that, first of all, they they probably were right. There was something to that. And also that you're doing it now. And again, you tell someone, oh, I'm going to go to a chiropractor. And, you know, the beauty of what we do in CRT, yeah, it only takes a minute. But the truth is, once you open that and get everything moving again, it would be great if they had 20 or 30 minutes just to disconnect, which most people don't have. So I'm glad that, that you're doing that. And I'm glad that now when people say, I'm going to the chiropractor, I'm turning off my phone, I'll be done in 40 minutes, an hour, whatever it is. But we need that time because of so much stress that we're under every day. I mean, when you if you just sit back and think of all the things that we have to do, all the pushes and pulls that go on through life, home, family, physical stress, chemical stress, emotional stress, the job, employees, the kids, mom and dad. I mean, it, it just never ends. And to give them sort of an oasis of 20, 30, 40 minutes just to reset their nervous system, let them calm down, and then go back into the world so they can handle that stress better. And again, then to come back, say, in a week or a couple of days or to whatever the, you know, whatever the plan is for that patient, it sounds like you're onto something. I think that's probably the, the way to go. That I, that sound, I, and, and again, before this call, I was not aware of what you're doing afterwards. So um, I'm pleasantly surprised. And, and you, so far in your experience, because obviously you practiced many years before in New Jersey. Right. You were not doing this in New Jersey with the, the post CRT. You were not doing right. it. I was not. So now you're doing that. And are you, uh, again, I know there's a lot of changes, but now that you're adding this component, if anything, can you can you share what you've noticed, good, the bad, the ugly of doing it this way? Uh, I've noticed, and you know, obviously the name of my practice is Center for Life Enhancement because I'm not, you know, the Center for Back Pain, the Center for Neck Pain. I want to enhance people's lives and have them adapt and function and just live better. And that's exactly what I'm seeing. So I'm seeing people now improve in ways that although they got great results before, they're just improving quicker, they're uh, holding better, they just kind of, they feel better. And then to be able to then recheck that every 12 visits with the equipment to see, mm -hmm. yes, you are improving. You, you went from a fight or flight, now you're in a rest, heal and repair. And it's obvious, yeah, well, this is why you're losing weight when you weren't losing weight before and nothing else has changed. Your brain had shifted. So those are things that, Although some of them may have been happening, I couldn't monitor them. And I really feel that this whole package is really just accelerating and taking full advantage of the power of the adjustment and the cranial release by then really letting it set in, locking it in right. with this final 12 to 20 minutes. Right, great. You, you mentioned a word that I've discussed on a number of my videos called they're holding the CRT, they're holding the adjustment better. The patient says, what does that mean? What does that mean I'm holding better? What, what? How would you answer that to them? It's not so much a physical, like, oh, your your bones are in place or your, it's really just your entire physiology, it has improved and it's continuing to improve. So you're actually gaining healing momentum. And that's the whole goal. Initially, and this is how I explain the, the different phases of care. Initially, we want to get you so you start to heal on your own. So we need to build up that healing momentum. Once we get that, what we do, and you've checked on the equipment, we've determined that you're where you're supposed to be because you are, people start holding that physiology much longer. Then we say we go to the training wheels and that's when we lower the frequency and we still expect to see improvement, but your frequency is less and we're um, really trying to get you to now take over. We've got the momentum going, let's see how you do. And everybody has at that point been great with the training wheels. Then we take the training wheels off and we lower the frequency even more. And we just kind of let them go. And they're coming in 
you know, once a week, once every other week. And again, we expect to see them continuing. If for some reason, which we have not seen as of yet, but they um, stagnate or they start to reverse, we would have to increase. But everything we've seen based on what we're doing, they're just continuing. So the holding and adjustment, again, isn't so much the holding of the bones staying in place, but their entire physiology and healing is continuing moving in an upward direction. And, you know, and health isn't here to here. It's right. going to be ups and downs, and that's normal. And some people panic when they're on a down part, but they need to understand, again, it, it's not a, a straight shot. Life happens in between, but we're doing everything we can so you can continue to adapt and move forward. Right. And what about that patient that comes in that is having some kind of symptoms? They're complaining of X, Y, and Z. They're coming in all your indicators are saying that they're improving, but yet they're saying, well, gee, doc, you know, I'm not feeling much better. I'm not feeling this. I mean, in my experience, when they would say that, I would say, well, or they would say, gee, you know, my back still hurts, but I'm sleeping better. Or my back still hurts, but I don't get the migraine headaches. Or my back still hurts, and I notice that um, my concentration is better. So we sometimes have to remind patients, as you said, it's not just a straight, you know, uphill or downhill direction. There's, there's twists and turns to things. And although the, the issue that they may have come in with is still giving them trouble, overall, things are working better. And Absolutely. That, you know, obviously, if the patient isn't happy or they're not experiencing anything, the machines can say, Gary, we're, we're doing much better. But if they're not educated, and to me, the whole thing, if I were you, like if I were now going to open practice straight, you know, straight, I would be talking about stress and I would be educating patients every day on what it is I'm doing, because really in your four walls is the only place that they're hearing this. They're not hearing this message on CNN. They're not hearing it on uh, television. They're not hearing it on the radio. They're hearing pharmaceutical ads. They're hearing if you have pain, take an aspirin. No one's talking about the root causes, although you're hearing more and more of it. It's still, you know, we're still not a drop in the ocean yet, but little by little. And it's just education. When you help someone, as you and I both know, when we help someone with this and they go home and they tell their husband and their wife and their kids and their mom and the ladies at soccer or the ladies in the PTA, that's that's a better type of referral than if you run a TV ad or a newspaper ad or whatever. We know that. So yes, yeah. And then you would add or take away from that patient that comes in and say, "Hey, doc, you know my back still hurts. What, what do you think's going on here? I mean, how do you how do you handle those types of questions?" I always let people know that, and I let them know when they come in. My job isn't to make you feel better; it's to allow you to heal better. And you're going to heal at whatever rate is right for your body, depending on what's happened in the past, um, your lifestyle and things like that. So um, although everybody wants to feel better and that's key, you can't feel better until you start healing. And uh, an example I like to use is the straw that broke the camel's back. Right. So that camel was not super strong running along great. And you put the straw in it collapsed. It was struggling. It was shaking. There was, so much stress on that camel that that last straw caused it to collapse. Right. We could take that straw off. Some people will start to feel better and say, okay, I'm, I'm good and want to leave. But that's not the case. We've just removed that straw. We want to get you strong again. And other people, you could take that straw off, but the damage has been such that you have to remove a whole bunch of straws and bales of hay before the body can actually get to the point where it's actually able to heal and feel better. And I let people know that we're dealing with the nervous system. We're making sure you're out of that sympathetic fight or flight, tiger after me, foot on the gas pedal. We're putting you into rest, heal, and repair. And then your body is going to do what it needs to do. And we don't know how long it's going to take. We just know it's going to happen because we're opening up that healing. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Again, you are in Georgia. You're in Woodstock. Woodstock, Georgia. Center for Life Enhancement. Center for Life Enhancement. Great. Uh, that was fabulous, John. Anything else you want to add to what we've said? No, I, I think we've covered a, a lot of great things. And I agree, uh, due to events in the past couple of years, people are starting to learn a little more, investigate a little more. Right. Um, we are just still just a drop in the ocean, but 
we need a, a lot more people becoming drops like you and I That's it. and changing the way people shift and really getting health to be understood for what it truly is and not a symptom based thing. You can't take um, an allopathic model and try to make it fit into a holistic model. It just doesn't work. That's true. Good point. And I, get, I think the last thing in my head that I'm thinking about is, so, okay, they come in on that first visit, you do your full evaluation. Now they're coming in on visit two, visit five, visit 10, visit 30, visit 50. From the time they walk in, how long are they typically in your office for on a, on a typical visit, you know, on average? Typical visit is usually, I mean, the adjustment and the cranial combined maybe take seven to 10 minutes maximum. Right. And then they're on the, um, in the transformation station from usually 12 to 20 minutes, sometimes 24 minutes. So you could say from probably about 20 to 30 minutes. Right. And we when make sure that they know, they know they need 30 minutes to shut the world off and focus on right. that, which listen, if somebody did that a couple of times a week or once a week or once every two weeks, or if they're getting better, maybe once a month, whatever it is, that's, to me, that's that's an investment that you have to make if you want the benefit of good health and, and proper exactly. function. Exactly, and that's a, it's a non-negotiable in our office. If somebody says, well, I just want to get adjusted and I don't want to, I, I just want to get in and out, we send them somewhere else because we know the power of what we have and we're not going to shortchange somebody just because they're not willing to, to put in the extra time to benefit themselves. Hmm. Okay, great. Hey, beautiful. Uh, All right. Anything else? Final alert, final last words? No? No, I think we're good. We're good. Okay. Thank you again, John, for today's meeting. This will be up on YouTube and we'll send it out and hopefully we'll get more people interested. And again, if you're in the North Georgia, you may be South Carolina, even North Carolina, John's the man. I mean, if this is what you're looking for, there's not too many people doing it, but hopefully there's more people doing this the way you're doing it. And this might be a model that we need to talk about other CRT practitioners because to me, this makes a lot of sense, especially going back to the way the old timers used to do it, where you would have to rest for 30 minutes. If you, if you can do that, why not do it the way you're doing it? Put them in zero gravity, put them on the mat, use the brain tap. To me, that makes a lot of sense. And again, for those of you out there that want to learn more about brain tap, I, I have a few interviews with Patrick Porter. He's the developer of brain tap. The website is braintap.com. You can get more information about the, the device and how it works there. John, thank you so much for your time. I wish you all the thank best. You, Enjoy your day. And we'll be in touch, okay? All right. Sounds good. Thanks again. Thank you, John.